Hello everyone, welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Um, sorry it's so dark in the video. Um, I'm recording this in the evening on a weeknight. Uh, I didn't have time over the weekend and um, up here in Vermont the days are still very short so limited amount of sunlight for you. Um, but today I have an activity that you can look forward to uh, in the coming months and that's another um, recipe for a natural dye um, that you can use for wool or other protein uh, fibers such as silk. And that's with goldenrod. Um, goldenrod is considered a weed by many, um, considered medicinal by some, um, but it grows wild up here in Vermont and across uh, vast parts of the country. And it makes beautiful, saturated, color fast yellow. Um, so it's my favorite uh, natural source for an intense yellow color and it's very easy to dye with. In fact, I would recommend it if you've never done natural dye before, it's a great plant to start with because it's almost foolproof. Um, unlike some other plants and extracts that you can use that are very temperature sensitive or very pH sensitive, um, goldenrod seems to set, um, set its color without a lot of fuss. Um, and it, uh, like I said, it is very color fast. So that yellow will stay true um, even after exposure to sun and, and washing and that kind of thing. Um, so to do your dyeing, you're going to mordant your yarn. And again, I'll link to instructions on how to mordant uh, protein fibers. But you're going to do that ahead of time. And then you're going to have your wet fiber ready to go on the day that you want to dye. Um, you're going to gather your goldenrod. I usually um, just use the flower um, fronds from the goldenrod. And you want to make sure that those flowers are looking fresh and perky and not starting to dry out. Um, they'll give better color and more color if they're nice and firm. So um, just take some uh, garden shears or pruning scissors with you when you go out foraging and just cut off those top fronds with the flowers on them and try not to get too much uh, leaf or stem as you're gathering things. Uh, again, you wanna fill up a five gallon um, kettle or whatever vessel you usually dye, dye in. Um, fill that almost to the top with the plant material and then you're gonna to top it up with warm water and, um, and then start your, start your heat source going and simmer that for about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, the dye will extract pretty readily out of the goldenrod. Um, and then I like to use a paint sifters. Um, they're like a, a mesh bag, but it's a very close mesh. It's used for um, sifting like um, debris out of paint um, but they work really well for sifting plant material out of your dye bath so that you don't get little tiny chunks of um, petals and things in your finished wool. Um, so sift that through, and then again, you can dispose of the goldenrod in your compost pile or just dump it outside um, because all you've done is boil that. You haven't treated it with anything, so it'll just break down in the environment. Then put your dye bath back onto your heat source and take your yarn and drop it in gently. Give it a slight stir and then let it cook for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, I usually do a, a slow simmer so you don't want it rapidly boiling, um, but you do want the water to be pretty hot and that will set the dye. I've noticed with goldenrod that it almost instantly slurps up the color. So again, it's very forgiving and it's very, um, it's almost an instantaneous dye effect, but just to make sure that that color really sets well, I like to cook it for a short period of time and then take it off the heat, cover it and let it cool down to um, room temperature before rinsing the yarn. And usually I let that happen overnight. So I'll come back the next morning, give my yarn a quick rinse um, and again, with goldenrod, it's pretty color fast, so you're just rinsing out excess dye um, that didn't take. And you should only have to rinse the yarn once or twice um, for the water to run clear, and then you can hang it in a shady spot to dry. 
Um, again, I'll include all the details on our blog, so you can get the link for that entry below, as well as other uh, tips for dye resources that I found helpful. And if you do decide to try to dye your own yarn or your own fiber, please let me know. I'd love to see pictures of how it turned out. Um, and we'll be back uh, soon with more tips. We're also gearing up for an announcement for our first tour of 2018. So if you've been waiting for that, thanks for patiently waiting. We have um, most of the details in place and we are going to include a natural dye workshop on that tour. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you soon. Thanks.